So this is Baruch Fleischman back here once again at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo inviting you to learn along with me. Even though I've read this book several times, uh, when I'm saying it over here, it helps me tremendously to see the perspective. Because before this, I was reading a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Now we're seeing that actually there is a trend going on. Life is very, very, um, what would you say, fragile. The Jewish people are still here, traveling as we are, and as we we as is our is our past. Uh, we're still together, still alive, we're still one people. Even that the heroic fact is that we've come back to Eretz Yisrael. Let's go over here, and we have a map. This is really Eretz Yisrael. If you look right down here, if you can see it, this is Jerusalem. I can bring it down lower, but the whole perspective, I can't keep it at the same time. So. This is Jerusalem, so that we're looking at the northern part, because apparently it's south of Jerusalem, Hebron, and so on and so forth. It's about as far south as you can go. Create say, Schaefer and Hebron are right next to each other. So these are places. Okay, so we said Jerusalem... We're going to go through the map and we'll find number one. Where is number one over here? It's got to be. Where? Okay, so this is Tiberias right here, Tiberia. And there was an important place there. It was called the Masora Center. So people, Jews, came to that place. So from the year 825, he's showing you this here, right here. Karaites immigrate to the Holy Land. So this is the year you're dealing in the 9th century here. Choosing Jerusalem as their center, so they came to Jerusalem. And settling on the western slope of Nahal Kidram, outside the city walls. Number three, where are you, number three? So he says here, he says, Tiberius Academy moves to Jerusalem. So there used to be this Masora Center, which was here. Now it's going to move also to Jerusalem. Beginning of the Palestinian Gaunate period, because of the great scholars in Tiberia came here. Number four. Find me number four. So he says here, can you see number four at the bottom? It says, here, Aaron ben Meir, scion of the Nassim family, aspires to reinstate primacy of Eretz Yisrael in Jewish leadership, but is defeated by Rav Sad Don on the issue of determining the Jewish calendar. So we see this competition going on in the Jewish world, and he says right here is that this Aaron ben Meir pushed the idea that Eretz Yisrael's version of what the Jewish calendar should look like, but it was decided that it would follow Rav Sadra Gon, who was such a tremendous, prolific writer, and so for the Babylonians, had rule over that calendar. Number five, the academy moves to Ramla during the reign of Caliph al-Hakim. So what happens here is Ramla, which is really close to the coast of Eretz Yisrael, but not exactly. So we have that the tremendous movement from Yericho, well, from Jerusalem, into Ramla became a great center. So the academy moves to Ramla during the reign of Caliph al-Hakim because of the tremendous tax burden that was placed on the Jews in Jerusalem, who always bore the brunt of the pride of the pain. In the year 1071, the, Sel the, Sel the Seljuks, I think that's how you pronounce it, conquered the Holy Land. Eliyahu ben Shlomo, Elijah ben Solomon, moves the academy to Sidon, which is up the coast. That's up here in the coast of Lebanon. Now, Sidon may be pronounced Sidon today. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. So then we come over here to the next one, and this is... Abiatar ben Elijah contends with David ben Daniel of Fustat, who wishes to gain control of Palestinian academy. So 
for this and here over here the academy which is up here in the siding so exactly he says it moves to tripoli when tyre falls to the crusaders albiator moves to tripoli okay so the crusaders came here these are the christians so we see that the how this is progressing how the years are moving along how the attempt to create a very strong academies in Eretz Yisrael was was working. However, Babylon was rich. Money breeds prosperity, breeds the opportunities to gain in scholarship. So now let's go on and let's see a little bit more about this history. So now we have a map in front of us. He says this is Jews of North Africa from the 12th to the 15th centuries. So once again, we have a drawing. This is the Mediterranean Sea, all this area. And we see that the main populations of where Jews are found over in this area right here, which would be North Africa, which is Kairouan, Algiers, uh, etc. Some names we know, Tangiers, Fez, all these different places. And so we're going to take a look at this try to understand what's going on uh, with the Jews at this time. So let's see here. Uh, we have here, the map has on it, if you can see the map, do the best I can. He says it has a little legend. Where did that legend go? It disappeared over here. It is. It is this, uh, this stripe uh, lines here, right here. Represents the first extents of the Almohads, the Al Mawahidin, the Al Mawahidin, something like that, and how it goes. So that's where they were. This is an area of Muslim con conquest by the Almohads. Let's see how that works. Remember, th this color right here, this blue color right here, refers to areas that were under Berber. So it's a different ethnic group, tribal areas that's in the 9th century in the 800s. And then you have these stars. So there's some place we're going to find a star here, a star there, a star here. So you have these different places with the center of Torah life and Jewish life. Now, let's look over here. Let's, let's, let's read. And if we have the chance, uh, we'll look at the map a little bit further. But we need to get the history of this. Because we'll see that Eretz Yisrael is poor. It has a great scholarship. But the prosperity is not the same as when you have the prosperity of the Tigris, Euphrates Valley, which is where Babylon is located. It's like the middle of the United States where you have the uh, Mississippi and the Missouri River and the Ohio River are all coming together. These are places where you could produce a lot. So here we have the status of the Jews in North Africa, as in all other Islamic states, was that of a protected people. They're called the Dehimi. Now, what this means, what does a protected people mean? It means that you have to bribe your way to exist. The first hundred years of Muslim conquest were rather turbulent. There was no Pax Islamica. There was no, in other words, the Islamic groups didn't get along. Naturally, this affected Jewish life. During the waning of the Umayyad dynasty and the, draw, uh, the drawing of the Abbasid rule, so the Abbasid, Abbasid, Ab Abbasid, don't know how to pronounce it, a confederation of Berber tribes revolted against the Arab rulers in Cairo and Western Tri uh, Tripolitania. I guess that's Tripoli. There's a Tripol Tripolitania means I guess it's a it's a whole cor corridor. I happen to work with sometimes uh, uh, a, a a man who's uh, from Tripoli, and uh, he says he's really related to Turkish people. So you have to understand that Libya is not so simple. So he says Tripolitania, Ibn Rustam. One of the leaders of the revolt fled and established a new state in central Algeria with its capital in Tiaret. At the same time, another group established a kingdom in the city of Plemison. Another Berber tribe established a state in the Tafilot oasis with its capital as another place is Jilmasa. So, help me God to pronounce these words. Despite uh, religious differences which they had, these states became important Jewish centers. So, so, so explain it. Tiaret was the residence of Rabbi Yehuda ibn Quraysh. 
a well-known ninth-century philologist and renowned author. I think a philologist. Just give me one second. Let me look it up and see if I can uh, get get some help. I think it has something to do with grammar, but I'm not sure what. And let me see how this works here. So to be exact, so I looked up the word philologist. Philologist is a student of languages, but looks at the origins of languages, the common the common threads between languages. And renowned author, Jews lived on the island of Jerba, in the region of the Jared uh, uh, of Jared de Gabes, and all these areas I don't know, and we'll look at the maps at another shear. And in the area of Mizav and Coragua. So we see the Jews prospered in different places. We made ourselves useful, made money, and were able to survive. But the change, the, there are continuing changes in the world of the Gentiles in which we are exiled. Some good, some bad. When Egypt was conquered and the Caliphate established there, Cairoan became the grand trading center in Africa and it was designated in a legal document in the year 978 and a center for Jewish scholars. With the weakening of the Fatiman rule in North Africa, uh, government was transferred to the Zirids in Cairo. Now we're going to have to find all these different places on maps. That will be another shear. So he said, Yusuf, Yusuf, Ibn Ziri. So these are all the these uh, Arabic names are these. Oh. A Berber and founder of the dynasty was a loyal servant of the Fatimids in the days when they ruled were ruled the Maghreb, which is Morocco. He appointed his sons as governors in various places. Eventually, they grew strong and severed their relations with the Fatimids in Cairo. So this is the way it goes. See, we tend to want to think, I, I'm thinking about this now because of what's going on in there, it's a throw. We tend to think that things should be static, that peaceful, I mean, in other words, no wars. But wars come about because of changes in the world itself. There are trends in the world. It could be poverty uh, is a great excuse for murder. So understand that if you watch the, the, uh, the documentaries about the, the murder shows that are on TV, See who's doing the majority of the murders. Well, it's not, you know, the fancy TV shows that show you this brilliant detective. It's poor people, people who are drug addicted. Uh, they get, they have access to weapons, they use them. You could have that in whole populations as well, and that's what happens because the economy and the prosperity keeps going up, it keeps going down, it keeps changing. This war win, they win this war, they lose that war. Did this, these people come in, those people gain power. It goes back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, they grew strong and severed their relations with the Fatimids in the Cairo. So here's another separate group. Recognize the sovereignty of the Abbasids in distant Baghdad. So apparently, uh, whoever rules the Muslims uh, is, uh, well, it can change. Now soon they established their city of Ashir, and Jews were in, from various places were brought there. Rabbi Shri Ragon and Rabbi Shmuel ben Hafni corresponded with Jews of Ashir. Kairouan was not ex excuse Ashir. There's a period there. Kairouan was not exclusive in its special status as a center for Torah learning and Jewish life. In southern Tunisia, the city of Dabez was famous as a mother city in Israel and the Torah center. Fez's status as a Torah center was determined by the residents there in 11th century, the Rav Avzi ben Yaakov, known as the Al-Fasi, author of the Rif. So if you study Gomorrah, the Talmud, you'll know that the Rif, or Halacha, that the Rif is a very important person there. He, he really was born in the year 1013. So you see the area, the D, what's going on. Uh, uh, in a place called Kalat Bani Hamad in Algeria. He died a hundred years, more or less, almost 90 years later in the year 1103 at Lucena in southern Spain. So Alfasi was one of the architects of Torah study in Spain and among Jewry in general. This is Baruch Fleischmann, Tikkun Elevator Kolel. 
It's another shear here. Uh, North African Jews, what happened there? What time? What period we're talking about? 10th, 11th century, moving up a little bit, getting closer to our date. 